The Mark Simone Show, Mr. New York, 710 WOR. Well, Ann Coulter, of course, the uh, best-selling author. You can get all of her books and uh, reader columns. Get everything at AnnCoulter.com. A lot of good stuff on her website, AnnCoulter.com. And make sure you follow her at Twitter. She's quite the tweeter, Ann Coulter on Twitter. Ann Coulter, how you doing? Fantastic. How are you, Mark Simone? Well, I uh, watched that speech last night. I got to admit, even though it was a meandering uh, bunch of cliches and slogans, it was actually, I think, the best speech Biden's ever given in his life. Um, because he lied the whole time and pretended to be for things that he is manifestly not for. I mean, it's just it, 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 um, apparently the Federalist has done it line by line. I was live tweeting the speech, <laughs> but needless to say, what I find most galling is – well, first of all, pretending his party and he himself are not for defunding the police and having <laughs> Democrats applaud. Um, yes, we have to fund the police. There was a great video put out, which I tweeted um, um, out, retweeted when, when he said that, of Democrat after Democrat after Democrat saying um, we have to defund the police. Um, and to the extent they don't say that, they are defunding the police um, and just changing the lingo. I mean, even he went into how we need that like you know crisis intervention and and violence avoidance lessons no we need to <laughs> arrest criminals try them and put them in prison that's what stops crime nothing else stops crime so good luck with your little social workers and um you know violence interveners or whatever you call them so to see them <laughs> applaud at that was just disgusting um, and I can't imagine that anyone is fooled. I mean, there's an op-ed in the New York Times. Yes, we really mean defund the police. And, of course, in city after city, Austin, just to name one, Austin, Texas, for example, slashed the funding of their police department. And now the city that, that could have been like like Miami, Boca Raton, um, you know, Naples, Florida, the population is going through the roof. People are, are escaping California, going to what used to be cool, hip Austin, and getting mugs. Well, okay, they're not quite living in Austin. They're 45 minutes outside of Austin. <laughs> but really, for me, you are talking to Ann Calder, absolutely the most galling is him having the audacity, as so many politicians do, to talk about how we must secure the border. Oh, good grief, just his first year in office, illegal immigration went up by 200 percent. And year to year, the following year, it's gone up more than 200 percent. They're flying that day. The administration are flying all these illegals um, that they've captured. And how much how much how much drugs they have captured is taken to be an indicator of how much they're missing. Um, to some extent, this is, this is what's coming through. And it's like, you know, you have, you have a, a butterfly net to try to catch them. Um, fentanyl cap, um, seizures just in, in South Texas are up by, um, I don't know, what's more than a thousand percent. Americans are dying of drugs all over MS-13 members. The administration is then sending them to purple states, um, so that, you know, their kids will instantly be citizens. They'll be locked in for life. Um, if only we had a term for that that suggested, you know, sort of a boating metaphor suggesting that it anchored the entire family <laughs> <laughs> to this country by dropping a baby on U.S. soil. Oh, yes, anchor baby. Let's try that one. Um, just moving them like crazy into these these vulnerable um, purple states that to, to flip them blue. That's what the Democrats want. And then hilariously, and then I will wrap up and, and pause for breath, um, <laughs> to cite why from both sides of the spectrum, um, labor leaders and the Chamber of Commerce want more cheap workers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no. no. No kidding, Sherlock. The Chamber of Commerce does not care. I mean, it is a representative of, of business interests that have no interest in the United States of America, our history, um, our heritage, our culture. What they want is to make a buck. Here, I'm sorry, Lenin is right. Um, they will sell us the rope with which we'll hang them. Um, they're, they're just like sharks, all appetite, no brain, more cheap labor, more cheap labor, more cheap labor. <laughs> that's the Chamber of Commerce is the group that's taken over CPAC, of course, which is why I haven't been able to speak there um, since Matt Schlapp and his lobbying clients took over because 
Um, I do care about American culture, history, um, um, our heritage, our, our founding documents, and not just making sure, you know, Boeing makes another dollar. Um, so, yeah, of course, Chamber of Commerce and labor leaders these days, because Democrats and, I, and some Republicans have gone along with the total stripping of manufacturing in the United States of America. I mean, other than the weapons that we make NATO sell, um, but labor unions these days, you, you're supposed to be thinking of like, you know, a big guy with gigantic biceps who's a steel worker. No, we're talking about teachers unions. We're talking about the, the school janitors unions, um, public sector unions, which should never, ever have been unionized at all. As FDR said, the biggest mistake you could make, as, as I believe Kennedy even recognized, because the idea of a, of a labor union is you're negotiating against, you know, running dog lackey of the capitalist system, the boss. He wants to squeeze more work for less money. Well, if you're working for the government, <laughs> you, you are the boss of the boss. It's the labor unions who get these Democrats elected, um, and then the Democrats raise the pay of all the government workers, and, and that's why all of the quote, labor unions, they're almost all public sector labor unions now, you're, you're not negotiating against someone who wants to lower your pay. He wants to raise your pay, make the taxpayers pay for it so that he gets reelected. Okay, now I'm yeah. pausing for a breath. <laughs> hey, well, you know, uh, you know who's upset, has a right to be, Elon Musk. He's, you know, Biden is busy thanking everybody who has a factory in the U.S. and GM's going to try electric cars. Here's Elon Musk. Every factory's in the U.S. He's the king of electric cars, but he's not union. So Biden snubs him and doesn't mention him. Well, uh, Elon Musk has every Great right to be mad. Great point. Yeah. Great point. I mean, and I'm appalled by that intel ceo that was you know pointed out at the state of the union and at least according to what biden said in his speech instead of doing i forget what it is like you know 10 billion worth of manufacturing in this country or 1 billion he'll bring back 100 billion or whatever it is there must be million 100 million of jobs in the u.s but only if if congress passes the democrats build back better bill Oh, my gosh, Mr. Intel, I'm awed by your patriotism. Well, that Intel guy got a mention in the State of the Union. How many Hunter Biden paintings did he have to buy to get that mention? That must have been some deal. <laughs> so, sleazy, what, uh, according to what Biden said, it's beyond sleazy anyway. So he's capable of building in the U.S., but he won't do it. He will hold the U.S. workers hostage unless some ridiculous welfare bill by the Democrats passes. And, yeah. and if it doesn't pass, no, screw it. I'm going to keep building in China. Hey, when Biden spoke about guns and he said, you don't need these weapons, you don't need you don't need them to hunt a deer, does he really think that's what the Second Amendment was about? It was an amendment for deer hunting? <laughs> they think they're so clever. And that, see, that line seems to work with soccer moms. And perhaps, you know, the very people I'm saying do not have any knowledge of America's History, culture, founding, <laughs> of course, the idea is that an armed populace can't be, can't be seized by a dictatorship, can't be subjected to tyranny. Of course it is. See, directly, the, see the Ukraine, why, for an example. Exactly. Um, and that's why, in general, um, the, the constitutional scholars, including many, many left-wingers who looked at the history of the Second Amendment, hoping to prove that it was not an individual right to bear arms, concluded that, um, I mean, like Akhil Lamar, and there's a guy, I think his name is Levinson, at University of Texas Law School, you know, all liberals in good standing look at the history and end up producing, this is, goes back years, end up producing law review articles saying, no, I was wrong. And yes, it's, it is an individual right, and basically the arms it protects is any handheld um, arm, Anything handheld that our military has. So no, not a rocket launcher, but yes, anything handheld that our military has, um, that's what the Second Amendment is protecting for private hands. Yeah. That is I by thought it was, far the majority view. Yeah, we only have a minute left, but his message to the Ukraine was powerful when he looked at them and he said, good luck to you. <laughs> that was the whole message. We, we stand <laughs> by you. Best of luck. <laughs> Well, don't you think in the Ukraine they're expecting well, some help? 
<laughs> well, I'm not really that interested in fighting a war for Ukraine's border when um, I'm really a little more interested, oddly enough, as an American citizen in America's border. And so, yeah, spending the first 20 minutes on Ukraine, um, yeah, yeah, Putin's corrupt, Russia's corrupt. Um, our country is the United States of America. Um, and, and this is the most gigantic subject changer. This way, the media has something to talk about other than the mask mandates, CRT, um, the border, the massive waves of fentanyl and meth pouring in across our southern border, inflation through the roof, gas prices through the roof. This is what the, the, the whole Ukraine thing was set up um, so that Biden, the Democrats, and the, and the media would have something to talk about going into midterms other than their policies for the last two years, which I, they know damn well the American people aren't going to be rewarding them for come election day. No, uh, some people do think uh, Biden, who knows what uh, these Democrats could pull off in a wag the dog kind of uh, anyway. But uh, we, we'll talk about this uh, next time, but we're out of time. But uh, go to AnnCoulter.com. You can get her books there, uh, read her columns, and uh, make sure you follow her on Twitter. Ann Coulter, Twitter, AnnCoulter.com. Ann Coulter, thanks for being with us. Good to talk to you, Mark Simone. Bye-bye. Right. Take care.